nothing neutral sight about this one as the Tigers of Auburn take to the field. Welcome everyone to the 2018 Chick-fil-A kickoff game on ABC presented by Walmart. The Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta. They'll host the Super Bowl in February. Today it's a top 10 showdown. Most likely the most important game nationally of the weekend. Apple juice, sparkling water, chocolate milk, whatever's in your glass, raise it up and toast to the return of college football. Hope you're surrounded by good friends like I am. Great to be back with Brian yeah, Greasy. Todd McShay joining us as well from down on the field. College football is obscene. It's the only big time sport where there are playoff implications, Todd, on opening day. It feels like a college football playoff game here, and it's only week one. What a scene. The only difference, though, is it's about 90 10 in terms of Auburn fans. This is definitely a road game for Washington. The good news for the Huskies, they bring a veteran quarterback, one of the most experienced and prepared quarterbacks in the country in, in uh, Browning, and he has 40 starts. This is his 40th start, so they're going to really rely on his experience in this opener. So the three of us traveled this past week out to Seattle, and we asked Chris Peterson about having the weight of the Pac-12 world squarely on the Huskies' shoulders. Oh, Chris, is that how you remember it? <laughs> that is not how I remember it. We didn't ask. You asked. You guys are cowards. I asked, and Peterson said it's the question he hates the most. But, Chris, what is going on inside those Husky helmets today? Well, it's certainly Chris Peterson hates the fact that the perception of the entire Pac-12 conference is on their shoulders. Here's what happens. Yes, it is on their shoulders, okay? And the only way to change that perception that the Pac-12 is not as good as the SEC or the Big Ten is to win on this stage. They have to win on this stage. They haven't done it the last two times. They've been on the stage against Alabama in the semi, and last year in the Fiesta Bowl against Penn State, they've got the opportunity today. Ready to rock and roll. The Chick-fil-A kickoff game from Atlanta. has won the toss and deferred. The Huskies will receive. Again, we joked that it was a neutral site game, officially neutral site. However, Auburn is the home team, as you might expect. They have chosen to wear their road uniforms. This has been a house of horrors for them. They've lost their last two games here. The SEC Championship and then the letdown to UCF in the Peach Bowl. So they're trying to change it up. We'll go with the white uniforms. They're even in a different locker room today. Miles Gaskin is ready to roll. He's back deep to receive for Washington. And the only common theme among all the players and the coaches, let's play this game. They've been staring at film of each other for nine months now. Ready to rock and roll. And we are Zone for the touchback and that means it's Jake Browning time the four-year starter who has meant so much to Washington I'm not ever going to be someone that goes and kills a seven on seven camp we want to really figure out who's going to fight I think people would pick me pretty high there's no question that his main asset is his grit and we talked with him about the Alabama game and the semifinal game and how that affected him he's going to face a similar test here against Auburn's defensive line early so here we go first down and 10 from the 25 Brown and turns and hands off to Miles Gaskin and he is rocked by Daniel Thomas a big start for the Auburn defense Todd and the, the running backs for Washington are going to be critical. Miles Gaskin is the well-known, productive back. The youngster, Savon Ahmed, is a speedster, too. These guys have a lot of juice. They need to get him on the perimeter, though, the passing game, the outside run, because Derrick Brown, the defensive tackle, is one of the best players in the country. Could be a top-ten pick in next year's NFL draft. Chick-fil-A impact players, there are many of them. Miles Gaskin down at the bottom of your screen. Brown and trying to get out of the trouble now. Roll to his left and shovel passes it incomplete. And a bring up a third down and ten. Darrell Williams was coming after him. So much of the start of these kinds of big time games is about emotion. And right now, Auburn's defense is flying around this football field. Jake Browning, we talked about his experience, has to manage these kinds of situations, especially a third and ten backed up in your own end.
They're going to try to set up the screen, and Gaskins can't hang on to it. It falls incomplete. Nick Cole was right in his face. So much of this game is going to be about the pass rush from Auburn, and Jake Brown is going to be without his starting left tackle. The preseason All-American Trey Adams did not make the trip for Chris Peterson, so they'll be starting a inexperienced Jared Hilbers at that left tackle position. Something to watch as this game goes on, Steve. Ryan Davis is back deep for Auburn. Here's the punt by Joel Whitford. Davis has to make a nice catch. And now puts his foot in the turf and takes off across midfield. Here's Ryan Davis. And the Tigers will start with excellent field position. Whitford, the putter, had to make the tackle. We see Ryan Davis make these kinds of plays on offense all the time. They flip the ball out to him on, on slip screens and bubble screens, and he makes these kinds of moves. So why not get him back there returning punts? It's the same kind of an action and sets up this Auburn offense in great position. It's a 32-yard return. And Auburn appears to be in business. Cam Martin Lee set back. There's no carry on Johnson. There's no Cam Petway to hand it to. A couple of 1,000-yard rushers they're looking to replace. And they'll throw on first down. It's Ryan Davis. Why wouldn't it be? Davis wrapped up by Taylor Rapp after he ripped off 14. When Ryan Davis came into this season, he caught 84 balls a year ago. That will red Auburn all time. And already, he's impacted this game. They do hand it off to Cam Martin this time. He'll lower the shoulder and get bumped out at the 21 by Jordan Miller. You know, Steve, the thing that I noticed about this Auburn team and talking with their coaches and talking with the offense is the, the calm of Jared Stidham this year. He is more relaxed. He's in total control of this offense. His second year with Gus Malzahn and Chip Lindsey calling the plays, and you can tell that he's been more comfortable. Second down and eight. Will screen out to Martin. Excellent pursuit by Washington, but they can't make the tackle until the 15. Tyler Rapp came up to put on the stick, but not until they got a big gain of eight in the first down. You see the tempo of Auburn already. They want to go as fast as possible. Play fake to Martin that time. And Stidham's going to keep it for a gain of a couple. We've Miles seen, Bryant made the stop. We've seen some of these safeties on both teams already in this game come up and lay the wood. Daniel Thomas for Auburn on that first drive, and now we've seen Taylor Rapp. One of the things I'm most excited about seeing in this game are these physical, hard-hitting safeties. It's Chandler Cox to the left of Stidham. Martin to his right. This is a little bit different. Instead of changing plays, didn't do a lot of that last year. Keep it on the ground of Martin. He'll pick up a few to bring up third down. Gus, we talked with him. The change for him a year ago. You think about what a difference a year makes, right? They lose to Clemson early in the season, and every now they lose to LSU. And Georgia gets a new contract, and now stability has come to this Auburn program. That's one timeout. Third timeout, Auburn. They're first. Tigers' first timeout. It's an early big play on third down. Back in Atlanta, it's the first ever meeting. I think about how long Washington and Auburn have been playing football. First time they've ever gotten together. So already some history here today as we welcome you back and we do so for a third down and seven for Auburn at the Washington 11. Here's Stidham. Good pocket for him. Back in the end zone. It is up and it is caught. Touchdown. Sal Canella. The 6-5 frame stretching up to bring it down. Touchdown.
Malik Willis is in there for the two-point conversion. The backup quarterback tries to lower his head, and the Husky defense says, I don't think so. Auburn will take their six and like it. DJ Beaver is presenting, preventing Willis from the two-point conversion. What a great throw and catch here from Jared Stidham. Look at Sal Canella. Runs a little hitch and then go. And Miller, the corner, just doesn't get back far enough. That ball was placed perfectly from Jared Stidham, where only Canella at six foot five can go up and make that catch. Unbelievable play to start the season for Auburn. Canella, the former basketball player, as you take a look from ref cam today, it was like he was going up for a rebound, and then the putback. Sal Canella struggled last year, it was well documented, he's struggling catching the football. He dropped a bunch of balls in this offense, he's worked tirelessly this offseason, along with Jared Stidham, to get the confidence back of his quarterback, and you can see the benefits there on the first drive. Grease, he was targeted just eight times all of last season, they go to him in a big spot here, and again, arguably the most important game of this opening weekend nationally. Browning, now the Huskies will get a second crack at it. Miles Gaskin is back deep. Just dying to explain to everyone the new college football touchback rule. <laughs> See if we get a fair catch at the five. Not this time. It's always great to say good afternoon, Cassidy Hubbard. Good afternoon to you, Steve. Brian Todd. Let's take a look at this opening weekend studio update brought to you by NHTSA, number 10 Penn State, Appalachian State. After a Trace McSorley TD, Darrington Evans responds with this 100-yard kickoff return to tie things up at 7 in the first. Steve, Brian Todd, back to you guys. All right, Cass, we'll talk to you all afternoon. Second opportunity for Washington and Jake Browning. They went three and out. Chris Peterson said when we were in Seattle, three and out is death. Have to stay on the field against this Auburn team. It's Miles Gaskin, and he's got first down yardage. This is exactly what Washington needs to do offensively. New offensive coordinator, Bush Hamden, we talked with him and Chris Peterson. They want to make this a space game. They don't feel real confident about their offensive line just coming off and blocking this defensive line for Auburn. So they want to get the ball on the edge of, a little bit to Mike Gaskin, Savon Ahmed, some quick passing game. Got to get that rhythm going. And the nice part, too, there, Gaskin working on the inside as an underside back, showing a lot of patience. It's Gaskin again. There's some more of that patience, Todd. As he'll lean forward for a few. Jeremiah Dinson made the stop. Gaskin came in needing 52 yards to break the all-time Washington rushing record held by the great Napoleon Kaufman. Gave him one on that last carry. His second and nine. Browning a throw. Just too far for Aaron Fuller. Dinson had the coverage. Washington pulled this win out tonight. Miles Gaskin has to have a big game. We were talking with him this week. He's become more of a vocal leader. He's unquestioned leader on this offense. And people are looking at him. Obviously, he has had a tremendous career in Washington uniform. And uh, tonight, an opportunity to pass Napoleon Coffin. Jake Browning still looking to complete his first pass. He's missed on his first three. His third and nine. Across the middle. Finds his tight end, Drew Sample. And they will give him forward progress for the first down. Ten yards on the play. Jake Browning does this as well as anybody in the country. Just extending plays. He doesn't get flustered. Extends that play and finds Sample for a huge first down. A little breathing room. They can exhale for a second. Browning out to Fuller. Nice tackle there. Javaris Davis on the outside. This Auburn defense going to play a lot of man free. Kevin Steele, their defensive coordinator, likes to get pressure and play aggressive man-to-man -man coverage. In order to do that, guys like Javaris Davis have to come up and make a tackle in space.
Second and nine. Huskies approaching midfield now. Brown gets the pressure. Trying to get out of it. And throws. Jamel Dean is there. It's the interception. Montavious Atkinson forcing it with the pressure on Browning who had to throw on the run. This is not typical of Jake Browning. Did the right thing, extending the play, getting out of the pocket, throw the ball into those stands. We'll throw a the Chick-fil-A kickoff game on ABC, presented by Walmart, is brought to you by Chick-fil-A Nuggets. Tonight is Nugget Night. Walmart. Discover more ways to shop at Walmart today. And Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. Just some of the spectacular features of Mercedes-Benz Stadium, just over a year old. Hosted some huge college football games, including the 2018 College Football Playoff Championship game. What a thriller that was a year ago. In Alabama and Georgia. Second opportunity. Jared Stidham. Takes the screen and he'll run for a few. DJ Beavers came up to make the stop. The interception to turn the ball over. Jamel Dean. First career interception for the junior. Yeah, it looks like he's doing it with a cast. He had an injury in camp and stayed in bounds. Clearly was in bounds and got his hands under that football. A huge mistake from Jake Brown, and he's put his defense behind the eight ball here. Early. Second down and eight. He's going to force the sideline, and he's able to complete. It's Cam Martin, the running back, turned receiver, and that's a first down. Great awareness from Cam Martin. You know, on Johnson did that so well, receiving out of the backfield, and it was remained to be seen if Cam Martin would be that part in the passing game. Of course, they didn't give him the first down. Came up just shy. There is a flag down now as Martin takes off, and he's to the 45. is moving fast. John O'Neill is our referee. It's a Big Ten officiating crew. This is a foul. Shot block. Offense number 64 and 71. 15 yards from the spot of the foul. 15 second down. Did you get two guys for that? Mike Horton and Jack Driscoll sounded like. Yeah, you need to have two for a chop block and uh, the right guard and right tackle Driscoll and Horton. And that's a costly penalty. They would have had the first down. Not only that, it, it slows up the tempo for Auburn. They want to get that first first down and then go as fast as possible and penalties slow them down. Chandler Cox is in the backfield on the jail and Harris, the tight end. Here's third and 12. And Stidham hasn't missed yet. It's Darius Slayton on the receiving end. Jared Stidham comes out on fire. He's five for five. Perfect back shoulder throw to Darius Slayton. You have to honor Slayton's deep threat because he's averaged 22 yards a catch last year. That's why the back shoulder is so effective. Chandler Cox is the ball carrier. Stopped by Greg Gaines, the man in the middle for Washington. The Huskies were thrilled. He decided to return with Vita Vea moving up to the next level. Had to have gains back, and they do. This Washington defense and their new defensive coordinator, Jimmy Lake, have a decision to make here early in this game, how they're going to approach the Auburn offense. Are they going to sit back and try to get pressure with their front four, or are they going to have to begin to blitz and take some more chances? Snapping quick. Pitch to Cam Martin trying the right side on for size. Jalen Johnson comes up to make his first stop. You mentioned Jalen Johnson. You talked about Greg Gaines, Shane Bowman. Those three guys up front for Washington defensively, they have to establish a line of scrimmage. The weakness of Auburn's team is their offensive line. So this is an advantage for Washington that they have to exploit if they're going to win this football game. Auburn's already three for three, converting first downs. Third and seven. 
slant inside is Nate Craig Myers. First down and then some. Taylor Rapp stopped him, but not until he had 24 yards. Two linebackers in the middle, going to vacate off the blitz and great read from Jerry Stidham. The inside slant for the first down. They're going fast, Greece. It's Cox out of the backfield on a short pass. Grab a Ryan Davis, I beg your pardon. And it's a short game. Big time recognition from Jared Stidham on third downs, right? That's the next step for him. We know that Gus Malzahn likes to go fast. That's we know they run the football and take shots down the field. But when you're behind the sticks on third down, your quarterback has to bail you out, and that's exactly what he did. Look at those numbers on Stidham, 7-7 seven to, seven to start. And a beauty on the touchdown pass. It's interesting to see this offense, which is typically very run-heavy based, now going through number eight, a quarterback in the passing game early. It's Cam Martin. And again, Stidham is doing this behind really an inexperienced Cam offensive Cam line. They know they're going to be growing pains. They've admitted as much. They look pretty good here today. You know, honestly, I, I, you see the four new guys up front. Talking with Jared Stidham, he's actually really confident in this group. You would think with four new guys up there, Mike Gordon really the only guy with any experience coming back. Jack Driscoll started 20 games, but that was at UMass. SEC plays a little bit different. But Jared Stidham hasn't freaked out. He's been okay. So this, these guys are good. I'm going to trust them. And so far, they've stepped up. Tenth play of the drive. After the turnover, Stidham trying to get out of there. Going to buy himself some more time and throw. Incomplete. Darius Slayton off his fingertips. He thinks he should have had a touchdown. Great adjustment there from Washington defensively. They dropped eight, rushed three. There was nowhere to throw that football for Jared Stidham. He did the best he could. Almost got the touchdown, but nice adjustment defensively for Washington. That's Stidham's first incompletion of the game. It's a 32-yard field goal attempt. This is Anders Carlson, the brother of Daniel. First collegiate kick is on the way, and it is good. Auburn's got a touchdown, missed two-point conversion, and the field goal for a 9-0 lead. Tonight here on ABC 8 Eastern, Louisville will take on number one Alabama. They'll play in Orlando. You can catch that game and every game all season long on ESPN+. Plus. So start your free trial today by downloading the ESPN app or visiting ESPNplus.com. All right, Lee, so who yeah. you got? You got two or Jalen? I think it's two. I feel awful for Jalen myself. But hey, hey, Nick has already said we're going to see them both tonight we are gonna see both. Yeah. in some combination. And they're such different skill sets that, you know, they both could be effective. I, I expect to see Hurts in red zone situations for sure with his running. Hard to knock 26 and 2 as a starting quarterback. Touchback time, but not before we check in with Cass. Thanks, Steve. Time now for today's All States Mayhem Moment. We had Ohio State and Oregon State on ABC earlier, but had to move it to ESPN News due to an hour weather delay. And the number five Buckeyes up 63 31 after Mike Weber's third TD of the game. Again, this one over on ESPN News. Back to you. Cassidy, thank you. It's only 9 0, but you're happy to have Jake Browning, an experienced four year starter, in this spot. A younger quarterback, you be hard pressed. Yeah, I don't think he's going to, the lights are going to be too big for him, but they have to start making some plays. Somebody has to step up around him and make a play. From the 25, Let's see if Miles Gaskin can make a play. Good burst of speed through the hole. He's got first down yardage and more. Out to the 38 yard line, it's a gain of 13. That's a little bit more like what we expected to see. The outside run, getting Gaskin and some of these speedsters in space creates some one-on-one -on -one matchups. Early on, they've been running the ball inside, and maybe that's to set up the, uh, the perimeter run. But the more the game progre progresses, the more we're going to see Washington try to work the perimeter. Two tight ends in for Washington. Kaiser and center. Gaskin. Try it again, and that time it doesn't work. 
Stop to shy of the 40 by Derek Brown. Expect to hear his name an awful lot today. 6'5, 325 pounds. Just take a look at him push Kirkland, the right guard, up. This is textbook. Get your hands out, then shed him at the last minute, and it engulfs Gaskin. That's amazing. The double team initially fought through both guys. Good look at what it looks like going up against him. No, thank you. Mano a mano. Flag flies. We'll check the marker. And going up for it is Aaron Fuller. What a tremendous grab. Fuller just exploded onto your TV screen. We'll see if it stands. The gate of 32 if it does. What a big time throwing catch. You say you need to make a play, and Fuller goes up and makes it. Browning gives him an opportunity. We'll see if it stands. There are two fouls on the play, both on the defense. Offside, defense number 55. That penalty is declined. Personal foul, looking to pass it. Defense number 55. 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. That's TD Moultrie gets busted twice. Well, and that's just the break that Washington needed. Take a look at this throw from Jake Browning. Right on the outside shoulder. Fuller waits till the last minute to go back up and get it. And it's just unnecessary for Moultrie, right? You're there, you take two steps, and then you push him in the back. And that's a young player making a mistake that gives Washington momentum. You have a 32-yard gain, and you get 15 or 14 and a half, if you will, half the distance to the goal. So we'll call it a gain of 46 on that play. And Washington is in business now. Three receivers in the pattern. Give it to Gaskin. Good sure-handed tackling by Javaris Davis there. Maybe one yard on the play. All right, Javaris Davis has made two really nice tackles in the open field already in this football game. 5'10", 187 pounds. He started 13 games a year ago, so he has that experience. He's playing that star position for Kevin Steele in this defense. It's like a nickel because Dinson, who played there last year, moved to safety, so it's kind of a new position for him. Here's second down and eight. Browning is flushed. And he'll just take the hit from Jeremiah Dinson, who the smoke up is. It's all man-to-man -man coverage from Auburn defensively, so somebody for Chris Peterson on offense has to separate from man coverage. We saw Fuller on the big play, but he wasn't really wide open. He had to make a great throw and catch. Somebody has to beat man coverage or start running some crossing and rub routes. Browning puts Gaskin where he wants him on third and ten. Good protection. Doesn't feel the backside pressure. And he skips it to Gaskin. Andrew Williams applying the backside pressure that time. Well, we talk about Don Tavius, Russell, Brown, Marlon Davidson, Cole. And then you put another group in here, and Andrew Williams comes around the edge. This was almost a disaster for Jake Bryan. That ball could have easily come out, scoop and score the other way. And that one, Grease, was not on Jared Hilbers. He had his man protected, in case you were thinking about the absence of Trey Adams from 31 yards away. Peyton Henry has connected for his first collegiate kick. And Washington is on the board. Earlier today, Danny Werfel was in the stadium to celebrate the Chick-fil-A Foundation as the new presenting sponsor of the Werfel Trophy, which is presented a college football player who best combines exemplary, exemplary community service with athletic and academic achievement. It's got to be a greasy trophy someplace, right? <laughs> Come on, it's got to be one. Back in Miami, junior high school. Well, got a greasy spoon yeah. at the house. It's not the same thing. <laughs> Silver. is back deep. But it's going to be Jatarius Whitlow who runs it out. And he'll clear the 20. Take a look at two more in a jiffy. Brought to you by Jiffy Lou. That's Jen Jerk Stidham. He's been hot so far in this game. He's moved around. He's extended plays. He's been accurate with the football. He got Cam Martin involved. Back shoulder throw. 
on the outside for a big first down and then this third down diagnose the defense the pressure throw the ball accurately on the slant and the touchdown to Canelo you think Jared Stidham heated up like he did for the last nine games of the regular season last year where he was unstoppable you marry that with that running game of Gus Malzahn and that's why this Auburn team has excitement for the season he's going to marry there I think he did here's Stidham who is engaged to his girlfriend Able to try the right side for a couple of yards. You see the old leather helmet on the field. The winner of this game gets to wear the old leather helmet. Wait a minute, you're just going to say you got engaged and just go right past it? Well, I just, you know, I, didn't want to, I, I know you were giving him some wedding advice. <laughs> I was talking to him on the field, and uh, I said, hey, you know, he was worried about playing the wedding. I said, yeah. take, take the season, you know, after the season you could do it, and then worry about the honeymoon. Let, let her do the wedding. Gotcha. Did him throwing and completing. Able to hit Seth Williams, the true freshman, one of the young freshman wide receivers we were told we would see today. It's a gain of 18. Seth Williams, 6'3, 210 pounds. As you mentioned, we're going to see four true freshmen playing the wide receiver position for, for Auburn. They're playing this game without Will Hastings and Eli Stove. It's opened up some opportunities for young guys. Moving fast. Ryan Davis is moving fast as well. Inside the 40, D.J. Beavers brought him down. Ch Chandler Cox had an unbelievable block there. He gets out, got him into the flat, just flattens oh. the defender. What a big-time hit. Fake the handoff. Go to Chandler Cox out of the backfield. Looked like they got Washington on that fake. Chandler Cox, one of my favorite players in college football. He does it all. He doesn't ask for any accolades. He'll hit you. He'll block. He's the best, one of the best pass pro guys on third down, and then you got to feed him. If you're going to ask him to block, give him the ball a couple of times on a down flat. Got 19 on that last play. Here's Whitlow up the middle for a couple. Third po possession for Auburn, and their third time inside the red zone. Gus Malzahn has always had this kind of a hybrid Swiss Army knife, I call him, type of player at this H-back position in the offense. If you're going to have this kind of vertical run game, downhill run game, you've got to have a, a fullback type, but he's also a good enough athlete to get out on the edge. Four-year starter is Cox. Still got some help from Cox there and able to turn nothing into something. D.J. Beavers to stop. Okay, so we give him Cox, a, you know, some kudos, and then on the next play, what does he do? Take a look at this. <laughs> he gets run over. Now, you know, it's the thing that I do with you. You know, I give you a compliment, and right. then the next time you let me down, right. you know, then you take it back. I got it. <laughs> see how it works. I said he threw a great block there as well. So you saw <laughs> how far off I was. Ryan Bowman ran right over. Stidham is 10 of 11. We'll watch for Sal Canella. That's him in motion. He's got the good salad coming out of the back of the helmet. And Stidham was looking that way. And Canella could not haul that one in. JoJo McIntosh on the coverage. Nice job from JoJo McIntosh. These two safeties for Washington, arguably the best tandem in college football between Taylor Rapp and McIntosh. And just got enough of that football, Canella, to force a field goal try. Anders Carlson is on for a 33-yard field goal attempt. Again, his brother was the three-time All-American, Daniel. How lucky is Auburn to have another Carlson? Not that lucky right now. He missed it. Missed it to the right. So it's 9-3. It remains in favor of Auburn. Well, we mentioned Jared Stidham had himself an eventful summer. He doesn't look too happy about it now. Getting engaged to his girlfriend, met her at Baylor, and he talked about the life-changing event. Yeah, he got, he got engaged this summer. Um, the actual proposal, believe it or not, is was probably the most nervous I've ever been. Uh, for some reason, I can play in front of thousands and thousands of people, but... Getting down on one knee was, was pretty nerve-wracking, to say the least. <laughs> I think he said he blacked out, Anthony. Yeah, he, he doesn't yeah, we, remember we, anything about it. We were showing to him on tape. <laughs> oh, really? Incomplete, Aaron Fuller. 
unable to haul that in. But about a college kid getting engaged. And I mentioned to you a Baylor soccer player. Did you see the, the rose petals down there? Yeah, that was you know, well, I mean, well done, well and, set and up. And who was taking the photo? That's what I want to know. It looked a little staged. I don't know. There's a little something suspicious going on there. And his future father-in-law, by the way, is the CEO of the Houston Rockets. 20 seconds left here in the quarter and penalty marker. Offside with contact, defense number 95. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Well, all in all, he just seems a lot more relaxed here at Stidham, doesn't you know? Uh, you make these big life decisions. You're still in college. You've got a lot of things going on. But I think the net net of all of it is that he's a better football player this year than he was last year. No question about that. There's Miles Gaskin. Maybe a yard on the play. Darrell Williams came up to make the stop. I just don't know how you're going to make a lot of hay running between the tackles against this defensive front in this football game. Opening quarter of the opening game is in the books. Auburn enjoying a fast start and a 9-3 lead. We'll be back after this message. A word from our ABC station. Welcome back to Dr. Pepper's Championship Drive Game of the Week. Auburn leading Washington by a score of nine to three. Happy September, everybody. Great to be back with Brian Greasy and Todd McShea and our crew. I'm Steve Levy. It's great to be back with all of you watching wherever you are on ABC. Incompletion. Gaskin unable to bring it down. Jeremiah Dinson was right on him. And that's something that uh, Bush Hammond, the offensive coordinator, told us they want to do in this game. They want to split Miles Gaskin out and throw him the football. They felt like I have an advantage there with him against a linebacker, in that case, a nickel safety in Dinson, but Dinson made a nice play. Hampton is a new slash old coach for Washington. He used to be the wide receivers coach, and after a year in the NFL, has come back to run the offense. Ryan Davis is back. Doesn't have to bat too deep. There is a flag down as Davis takes off. Cross midfield. Cuts to the outside. Ryan Davis. And he'll finally be knocked out of bounds. At about the 15 or two markers down. Feels like a block in the back. I think you were right, my friend. Oh. Number 17 for Auburn. Roger McCreary or Marquise McLean, they've got uh, double numbers, right? Just as he got to Davis, I think, pushed in the back. It's just a 38-yard punt for Joel Whitford, but a 45-yard return, and we think it's coming back. on the play, both on the receiving team. Holding receiving team number nine. That penalty is declined. During the return, holding number 17 on the return team. Ten yards from the spot of that foul. First down. It was Marquise McLean. I saw the block in the back. Maybe there was a hole before the block in the back, but either way, that play should come back. So Whitford, the punter, gets bailed out after just a 38-yard punt. Marquise McLean will feel shame temporarily on the Auburn sideline. Don't want to say the entire season is on the line for Washington, but let's just say, <laughs> I'm not saying, Greece, I'm just saying, if they win today, their chances are twice as good to make the playoff should they fall today. Yeah, and I think when you look at this graphic, it, it, the difference that Auburn faces, right, is the, is the strength of the SEC in their road games against Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi State. That's why their percentage is the way it is. But there's pretty much consensus. People think that Washington is the leader to win the Pac-12 this season. Direct snap out of the Wildcat to Jartavius Whitlow. That is something that Auburn did 51 times last season. 
Mostly going to carry on Johnson. Of course, he's long gone. Stidham's back in there. We expect him to take this snap. And he will. Thanks to Martin. And the throw. Seth Williams on the receiving end. He's got first down yardage. 19 on the game. We went to Auburn practice, and this is what you see all day long. It's just accurate throws. The ball doesn't touch the ground when Jared Stidham's throwing it. There's Cam Martin up the middle. And when you have the run game coupled with that, this is the sting that you get. Just a little token fake and a, and a window behind on the slant. That's deadly against defense. It's Martin again, the ball carrier. For a couple. And it'll bring him a third down. And you see the difference with, with Jared Stidham, right? From, from last year, the Clemson game, he got sacked 11 times. And Gus Malzahn gave up the play calling, put it in Chip Lindsey's hands. And, and those two, Chip Lindsey and Jared Stidham, have got on the same page. They got it rolling towards the end of last year. They had the hiccup, obviously, against UCF, where he didn't play well. But it's been a great start to this season for him in this game. Third down and one. It is Martin not going to get there. Interesting part of the field. We'll see if it's decision time. Auburn started four for four on third down conversions. Have come up short the last couple. And Gus Malzahn's going to go for it. It's a perfect area of the field. Even if you don't get it, at least the ball is not on your end of the field. But this is where you wonder about Cam Martin. Does he have the weight to be a short yardage back? I think we're about to find out. On that play, he's got the weight and then some. Cam Martin, first down, yardage, and plenty more. Gain of 19. Byron Murphy brought him down at the end. It's great blocking up front. Kim, the center, gets up on the second level. Horton, the right guard. Well done. And it's Martin again. He'll be forced out of bounds. Can we give some love to Caleb Kim, the center, on that big fourth down conversion? Making his first career start for this offense. Trying to replace Austin Golson, who's played at that position. Young man was in a battle in preseason camp with Nick Brahms. And gets his first start. Has to go up against a... Yeah. All Pac-12 defender in Greg Gaines. He's holding his own. Second and four. Back inside the red zone. Spin of the throw. Out of the backfield is Whitlow. Sort of stumbled, but then the second effort. He will have enough for the first down. Washington swarming to the ball, but it's not soon enough. Yeah, Washington is one step behind here. This tempo, you wonder how defense is. You know, you try to practice this in preseason training camp, but until you get real speed, it's hard to simulate the speed of this offense. And it's Whitlow, brought down almost immediately by Jalen Johnson. As good as Auburn's offense has looked in this first half, it's still a six-point game. You've got to remember that. So you've given up a bunch of yards if you're Washington defensively. But in this area of the field, the red zone, where it's constricted, this is where you have to get a stop. Fourth trip in. Just nine points on the scoreboard at this point. Here's Stidham. Able to turn the corner. He showed a little explosive speed there. He picked up an extra few. He'll surprise you with his mobility. I mean, he doesn't love to run, doesn't do it a whole lot. But he can move around in the pocket when he's forced to, and when nothing's open downfield. He's got some wheels on him. Gre Greasy was looking at me like, maybe explosive is too strong. <laughs> Sneaky. I got your back. You got Sneaky. You. Sneaky's yeah. a good one. Difference between being fast and quick, fellas. I was neither. <laughs> Third and seven. That's Canella. Top of your screen of motion. Stidham firing. Good defensive play. Miles Bryant came up to knock it away. 
Great job Fourth from down. Miles Bryant. One of the smartest players on this defense for Jimmy Lake. He plays that nickel position. They ask him to do a lot. Play man to man coverage, play zone right there, came up, broke on the football, much like JoJo McIntosh did the last time Auburn was in the red zone and knocked the football away. Another crack for Carlson. Last one didn't go so well. This from 28. And the youngster settles down and puts that one through. 10.35 to go in the half. Auburn leading Washington 12-3. The college football playoff lives on ESPN. That's what he said. Washington Huskies were given 7,500 tickets. Or use 7,500 tickets for this game. Mercedes-Benz Stadium holds 71,000. You do the math. The rest are here from Auburn. Yeah. Well, they've been they've been looking forward to this game for three months since they came up on the schedule and we'll be talking about this game for the next three months as the college football playoff conversation continues to go and how does the Pac-12 compare to the SEC yes. I mean all that this game will be that game that they talk about three months from now. Football power index as this is one of the five most pivotal games of the entire season. Of course, Washington was here a few years ago. It didn't go so well. 2016 Peach Bowl. Alabama's defense held Washington their season low in points and yards. And the Alabama defense scored their NCAA leading 11th defensive touchdown. Bo Scarborough had a big day, 180 yards. Alabama went on to celebrate their 37th bowl game victory. And Jake Browning took a beating in that one. Certainly did. He said after the game that he physically, he didn't feel like he belonged in that football game. And he changed his work habits, did a little bit less film, a little bit more working out in the gym. Savon Ackman gets into the game, and he's taken down immediately for a loss by Dontavious Russell. And one of the things, one of the things that happened in that Alabama game is the offensive line for Washington was overmatched. And the same thing's happening here in this football game. Dontavious Russell, Jonathan Allen it was two years ago. Similar outcomes. That's a big man in the middle. 6'3", 320 pounds. It's a loss of four on Ahmed's first carry. Quick throw by Browning. Out of the flat to Chico McClatcher. He's another one of those players that are trying to get the football into his hands. He can be explosive, has missed significant time with injuries. But a couple of years ago, when he touched the ball, he could go with it. Yeah, McClatcher is uh, 100 miles an hour all the time. So explosive in the open field. He was hurt after the second game last year, and everybody was wondering why is Jake Browning not as good as he was in 2016. And that was one of the reasons was McClatcher went down early. Dealing with an ACL. Just like Quinton Pounds, at least they had each other to rehab together. Here's third down and 10 from the 25. Browning, wide open is Aaron Fuller in the middle, and he's got first down yardage. That pitch and catch looked easy, gain of 13. Great job by Fuller, a very savvy veteran on this offense. Jake Browning, that's how he refers to him, but he caught that football about two yards short of the first down. Didn't shake and bake. He went north and south and got the first down. A good job in pass protection, too, to give him the time. The right guard and right tackle, Jackson Kirkland and Caleb McGarry, did a good job of double teaming Derek Brown, the great defensive tackle, number five. And then the running back, Ahmed, picks up the defensive end. So an adjustment there for Browning and the, the Huskies. Washington has started with the football from the 25, the 25, the 25, the 20, and the 25 again. Here's Ahmed. He can fly when he gets in the open field. And there's plenty of running room there. He's down on the 40-yard line. He rips off 22. Nice blocking on the left side of the offensive line. No Trey Adams. Hilbers comes up. He gets the block on Dontavious Russell. And all of a sudden, a little bit of momentum for Bush Hamden calling plays with Ahmed in the game. Hamden calling plays for the first time since 2014 when he split the play calling duties at Arkansas State. This is a whole different kind of animal. First down attempt from the 40. 
on the ground. Ahmed. Deshaun Davis came up. It was a flag down. You get Luke Wattenberg, the left guard, with a hold. Just kind of threw the defender down. He was in good position. Didn't need to throw him down. Those are the mistakes Chris Peterson. Offense number 76. 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat first down. You just don't need to torque him like that. Once you get that body position, the hole is there. Just stay up. He's working on Dentavious Russell. It's the best he could do. Was Bush Hamden, the offensive coordinator. Last year he was with the Atlanta Falcons, coaching the quarterbacks, and Matt Ryan. It'd be interesting to see how Hamden marries with Chris Peterson because Peterson likes a little bit more exotics. Hamden's more not out of the box. Brown taking this shot, and it's Aaron Fuller. There's a penalty flag down. Fuller is down at the five. And I think that's going to stand. 42 yards. Javaris Davis is down and in obvious pain. Best interference. Defense number 13. That penalty's declined. He's open to play the first time. That was Davis in the coverage. Yeah. Found the matchup that they wanted. Javaris Davis on Fuller. Remember earlier in the game, Fuller had a, a back shoulder throw for a big first down. Clearly, Davis came in with the left hand, but it didn't matter. Fuller made the play. The play is under review. Bill Lamontier is with us and joins us now. Bill, what are they looking at closely here? They're looking to see as he goes to the ground, does he maintain control of the ball? If he lost control and hits the ground, it will have an incomplete pass. Then that they go back to the pass interference. We'll come back with the rule on the replay when we come back. The Chick-fil-A kickoff game on ABC, presented by Walmart, is brought to you by Pacific Life. Experience the power of Pacific. Mazda, feel alive. And Jiffy Lou, you can do more in a Jiffy. Mercedes-Benz Stadium, only 109 miles away from Auburn's Jordan-Hare. Last year, they played a couple games here, the SEC Championship and the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Looking for their first win here in this building after having a two-game losing streak. While we're away, the play call on the field stands. Yep, Fuller had his hand under that football, had it in his control, and they deemed that he maintained control through the ground. I think that was the right call. Yes. Ball can touch the ground. That's okay as long as you maintain control. It was what he did. It's Gaskin. Out of the Wildcat, Miles Gaskin trying that one. Your, your point about the control of the ball and hand under the ball is excellent. What they were trying to determine was as he hit the ground and he rolled over, did he was he losing control of the ball caused by the ground? Right. And the video evidence was inconclusive. That's why it stood versus being confirmed. So we're going to confuse everybody, right? In the NFL now, there is no more survive the ground, but in college, we still have that. Exactly. That's Aaron Fuller, bottom of your screen. Andre Bocelli in motion, top of your screen. And they're going to get a timeout, Washington. It's only four seconds. The play clock is winding down. And an important spot on the field. We'll come back. Second and goal. Knocking on the door. Welcome back to the 2018 Chick-fil-A kickoff game on ABC. Presented by Walmart. You come back at an excellent point. Washington's deepest penetration today. With the ball spotted at the eight-yard line of Auburn. It's an area of the field where Jake Browning loves to throw the ball up to Ty Jones, his 6'4 wide receiver. Looks like he's got man-to-man -man coverage. Drive to start it at the 25. Here's Browning, Lofts one. Good call, Reese, to Ty Jones, but he couldn't bring it down. Ty Jones is big and physical. He has done this all camp against great DBs from Washington. Almost pulls that football down. Looked like he had his right foot down. And if he was able to pull that in, it would have been a touchdown, but it looked like Big Ben Heaney 
certainly had uh, his hand in there. Third and goal. Browning fake the throw and then try to run up the middle. And he runs into an Auburn wall. Left by who else? Dontavious Russell, the force in the middle. And he's laughing about it. <laughs> I understand the play call and what Chris Peterson's trying to do here. Spread it out and maybe find a crease for Jake Brown. He had seven touchdowns rushing a year ago. He's got that kind of ability, but nowhere to go with big Dontavious Russell in the middle. Here's Peyton Henry. Lefty kicker. From 28. On the way, and he's got it. Washington inches closer. Dontavious Russell, he's having a good time. Hope you are too. Hey, tomorrow night, 7.30 Eastern here on ABC. Number eight, Miami takes on the Tigers of LSU, the Lusso at AT&T Stadium in Dallas. And then on Monday night, we've got a mega cast. Virginia Tech takes on Florida State at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Additional coverage on ESPNU, ESPN News. The first ever Goodyear blimp cast on ESPN3. Let's get McShea up in the blimp. <laughs> that would be awesome. I actually wouldn't mind it. Yeah. You're not afraid of heights. Be good to see DeAndre Francois back, right? After uh, missing most of last year after that injury against the Alabama Crimson Tide. Good to see him back out on the field. Here's Whitlow on the return. Out to the 20-yard line. Reverses, and he'll squeeze out six more. And why not? Here's Cassidy. Thanks, Steve. Carmix Drive, what's possible? Update number 17, West Virginia up 10-0 on Tennessee. Fourth and goal. Jared Garantano to Dominic Wood Anderson caps off a 17-play, 78-yard drive to bring the Vols within three. Steve, Brian Todd, back to you. Right, Cass, thanks. Six-point game here. A lot of people thought this would be a low-scoring affair. 12-6, under six to play here in the half. First down and 10 for the Tigers, number 27. And it is Cam Martin. Right into the defense of Jimmy Lake, who is, again, one of the old coaches yet in a new position for Washington, taking over as the defensive coordinator. Yeah, it's been a great story. Jimmy Lake is one of the most respected uh, defensive coaches in football, whether that's professional or at the coll collegiate levels. And, the story of how he got the job is amazing between him and Pete Kwiatkowski, who was the defensive coordinator the past three years. On the ground, it's Cam Martin. Nothing doing. Stop the line of scrimmage. Benning Potawahi makes the stop. So it all started back in the middle of October, apparently. Everybody was concerned that Jimmy Lake was going to leave. He was getting yep. offers every year. He's going to go be a D.C. someplace. Yeah, he was going to go either. He had offers from two SEC schools. Florida State wanted him. And Pete Kwiatkowski, who you see there on the right, went into Chris Peterson's office and said, listen, I'll step down from the play calling duties. You promote Jimmy Lake and we can keep him because he loves working with him. It was an unbelievable story how selfless Kwiatkowski was and Washington's beneficiary. Here's Stidham. All of a sudden, hit from behind. Couldn't feel the pressure coming. And a flag comes out. Ariel Nagata. Got to him eventually. All sorts of time for Stidham to get rid of that one. Yeah, held on to that one a little bit too long. There's a flag that came in late from the secondary. And when Jimmy Lake thinks he's going to get off the field with his defense, that's in the area of a Defense number one. Ten yards from the previous spot. The yardage results for the first time. It's on Byron Murphy. Boy. You design that defense. You get the pressure. Nagata gets back there. You get off the field on a much needed three and out. And then they get Byron Murphy with a hold in the back end. I think you saw him just come into your screen on Slayton. Staying on the field on first and ten. Flea flicker. Back to Stidham. Being chased by Greg Gaines. And 
Sinem will slide down across midfield to the 42. It's a game of 18. It's just great decision making from Jared Stidham. When you call that play as a coordinator, you want the big shot, but you need your quarterback to make your right if it wasn't the right time. It's exactly what Stidham did by using his feet. Stidham, he catches breath and let Jartavius Whitlow run the football. Whitlow is from Lafayette, Alabama, although apparently they call it Lafitte, Alabama, if you're a native. He's got some quick feet there, too, but the Jimmy Lake story is remarkable. Lake said he was sitting in his office. Coach Pete comes in, closes the door behind him, and thought he was in trouble. <laughs> right, it's got to be bad news. <laughs> Somebody did something wrong, and instead he said, hey, Coach K has an idea. It's all his idea. This is an effort to keep this unit together. Yeah, they just, they, they love working together, and it's work for them. It's Whitlow again. The amazing thing is, you know, under Pete Kwiatkowski, this defense was the number one rated defense in the Pac-12 three years in a row. So right. it wasn't like the defense wasn't playing well, you know, but that, that was so selfless about what he did. And, you know, especially this day and age with coaches in college football, this needs to be more of the model. This kind of approach, selfless about the team, just a really good story. And that Lake Kwiatkowski relationship, that goes back 20 years to everyone is so tight, so familiar. Kwiatkowski's been with Peterson since 2006, been his coordinator since 2010. Sean Shivas has checked in the game, and it's the pitch to Shivas, or Worm as they call him. He's got first down yardage and initiates some contact out of the 30 to gain an eight. But well, Gus Malzahn is really excited about this young, true freshman, Sean Shivers. Certainly, he's low to the ground, five foot seven, but he is fast and quick. And you know this offense, Gus Malzahn will find ways to use players like that. 5'7", 73, out of South Florida. Sugar huddle, they love to get up and go quick. On the ground, Cam Martin. They'll push it across the 30. We were told Auburn Three freshman running backs, four freshman wide receivers, and we would see them all. Yep, and we've already seen Seth Williams had a big uh, catch on offense. Matthew Hill's been in there. Asa Martin, they're really excited about. So certainly uh, the cupboard is not bare after carry on Johnson leaves. Second and nine, here's the Washington pressure now. Skid him in the face of it, throws to the end zone, it's caught, but it looks like out of bounds. Darius Slayton could not stay in bounds. Well thrown ball here from Jared Stidham. Just takes him a little bit too far out of bounds. Felt like Slayton got away with a little push off there as well, working on Miles Bryant, the nickel corner. That's this offense, right? Run the ball, run the ball, take a shot. And that's the guy they're going to take a shot to, Darius Slayton, when they do. Third and nine. And the Washington 30. More pressure up the middle. It's picked up. Stidham trying to get out of trouble. Looks to shovel the football forward. And jumping on it was Jack Driscoll. That play was doomed from the start. Nowhere to go with the football. And then at the very end, Stidham trying to throw that football forward. He's thinking in his mind, I need to stay in field goal range, right? Because you're right on that fringe. And as a quarterback, you're thinking, you're thinking, now you're in trouble. And you say, wait a minute, I can't lose 10 yards and force a longer field goal. That's what he was trying to do, get rid of the football. Might have lost one of his players, Ryan Davis, who has been so good on the return game and catching. He's the injured Tiger down on the field. Coming up at the half, send you back to the studio for the State Farm halftime report. As it starts to feel like college football season. It's the third time that uh, Auburn has got down here in this red zone, and the Washington defense has stiffened up and forced a field goal attempt. Carlson's made a couple, but he also missed one. But red zone offense is going to be 
a key point of conversation with Gus Malzahn at halftime. You can guarantee that. Auburn will get the football to start the second half. Look at a cash in here with a minute 40 to play in this second quarter. I think Gus Malzahn's asking why wasn't that an incomplete pass. Here's Bill Lemonnier with us. It's an interesting scenario. I had him flipping the ball forward. Yep. I don't have an eligible receiver in the area either. So you have the potential for intentional grounding. Correct. But it should be a spot foul and loss of down. But there was no flag thrown, right, Bill? So that could not have been the call. No, it couldn't have been. But if they, if, I'll wait till the play's over. Here's Carlson. Going to try from 53. He's got plenty of leg, although he's missed from 33 already tonight. From 53 on the way. And it is perfect. And Auburn increases their lead to 15 to 6. If if the replay reviewed it and buzzed, the referee would have a right to announce that if replay changes this to a pass, we'll have an intentional grounding call. Okay. But we had no stoppage by replay, so they, they probably just figured that where the ball was at in the next down wasn't a factor. Well, it probably blew the blew, blew the play dead, right? That's probably what happened. They did blow the play dead. Well, they they, they couldn't rule it as fumble and a fumble recovery. Okay. Would you have thrown a flag there? No, I would have waited to, with the buzz. I would have made an announcement that if replay changes this to an incomplete pass versus a fumble, I'll have intentional grounding. Yeah. Well, Carlson made it right. I mean, 53 yards. So the Carlson Big story leg. is interesting. So I keep mentioning his brother who was just terrific. Daniel Carlson now with the Vikings. Daniel Carlson had the same unit grease, the same snapper, the same holder all four years, right? And of course, when the younger kid brother comes out, he's got everybody new. Everybody new, no experience out of the snap or the hold. And he's uh, trying to live in his brother's big footsteps. But you're right. How lucky is Auburn and Gus Malzahn, you know, Daniel Carlson made 92 field goals, 80% of the field goals he made in his career. And they can only hope that Anders will be somewhere in that neighborhood when he's done. Touch back to bring it out to the 25. Take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. I think the story of this first half really has been that red zone, right? The red zone for both teams. They tried to, uh, to get the ball in the end zone, but have settled for field goals. Certainly, Jared Stidham came out on fire. I felt like he's been really sharp, throwing the ball down the field, avoiding mistakes. The one interception mistake from Jake Browning, we're trying to throw the football away, come back to bite him. But it's still a nine-point game. From the 25, here's Jake Browning. Throwing and completing to Aaron Fuller. He high-steps a man. And he's got the first down yardage. Aaron Fuller has been the playmaker in this first half for Washington. He's caught one, two balls downfield. They got to get him the football a little bit more. I love the crossing route. Good against man coverage. Another first down throw. Andre Bocelli makes his first catch of the afternoon. Back to back, no huddle here. I like throwing the football, get this defensive line tired, rushing the passer, and you have time to throw. Browning taking a shot. Ty Jones, there is a flag. There's some confusion now on the field. The officials talking about it. I think one had it as a catch. Absolutely, this is a catch. Ty Jones in great position. This ball comes down perfectly. Look like a hold there. Well, not the Certainly only pass no. interference, but that wasn't going to stop Ty Jones from catching that football. Pass interference. Defense. Number four. That penalty is declined. Result of the play is the first time. Noah Igbenogany had the coverage and was flagged for it. Under a minute to play here in the half. It's a gain of 36. I go right back to Jones. He's your best mismatch in the red zone. Taking another shot. Oh, a spectacular catch by Quinton Pounds for the touchdown! How did he hold that one in? Well, you want to 
to talk about an answer. Auburn scores, and right back, Washington comes four straight passes right on the money from Browning in an unbelievable catch from Quinn Pounce. That's Odell Beckham neighborhood. What a grab. Welcome back, Quinton Pounds for Washington. Here's Peyton Henry for the extra point. Bit of a high snap. Still able to get it through. You want to talk about trying to change the perception. Jake Browning, I say he's heating up. In the last 40 seconds, completions for 12, 14, 36, and 13 yards for the scores. Four different receivers and a catch they will be showing on highlight shows like SportsCenter. Oh, man, that, is that not a, a SportsCenter top 10 right there? Ten in it. <laughs> they need Quentin Pounds to come on. It can't just be about Ty Jones. Aaron Fuller starting to, to heat up, as you mentioned. Well, they get Pounds and McClatcher back, both dealing with ACL issues. And that would make Jake Browning's life a whole lot easier. See a little pooch kick there. Under the 25-yard line. But yeah, if they can if they can begin to beat man coverage, because that's what you're going to see when you play Kevin Steele in Auburn. They're going to play man coverage. They run the crossing route to start that drive, and then Chris Peterson starts to open it up, take some shots down the field. And you got to give some credit to that offensive line, too, for giving Browning the time to, to operate. See how Auburn plays this. With the ball at the 25. 42 seconds left in the half and two timeouts. And they're going to fake the conservative. Davis has it. And give it to Ryan Davis, who's done everything. And from Maruski, they faked like they were going to take a knee. <laughs> a little trickeration. We were expecting that out of Washington. Not think, so much from Auburn. I think Gus did that just for Chris Peterson's sake. <laughs> Gain of 11. If next week's an opponent, something to look at on tape. And now, Stidham underneath to John Samuel Schenker makes his first grab. So Auburn's got two timeouts, and Carlson is good from 60. Yes. So they only have to go about 25 more yards here. Certainly within range. down yardage and slid down it's gonna be a hold wipe out the seven yard gain as you look at Carlson holding offense number 77 10 yards from the spot of the foul repeat second down well, in these situations the penalties are, are a killer spot. right because not only do you lose the yardage Steve but now you also spent 10 seconds on that last play so 10 seconds comes off to clock and, and you haven't gained any yards. Stidham from Martin. And he'll be brought down. He's past the 40. And Chris Peterson will quickly take a timeout to six seconds left. Six ticks left. You know, I, uh, I think I don't think you have enough time here to set up a field goal because the play is going to take six seconds. So you're probably looking at you know heaving this ball down into the end zone on a hail mary. The second half is going to be fascinating because Jake Brown is heating up. He's found something on the outside matchups that he likes in the passing game. I think Jimmy Lakin has got to be pretty. Uh, happy with his defense the way they played in the red zone and, and Gus Malzahn like we talked about He's gonna be heated in that locker room talking about his red zone offense and getting the ball in the end zone Late substitution for Washington with Six seconds to play Quick toss to Davis Just... Takes too much time. I would have thrown the ball in the end zone. Yeah, why not? some statistics there 
and Auburn will get the football to start the second half. Here's Todd McShay. Coach, just six points for the majority of the half, and then you score the touchdown when, in the final minute. How important was that score? Yeah, momentum. You know, we just got to settle down and play. Um, they, got, they got a good defense, but our guys just got to settle down. It seemed like you started to figure things out offensively, getting some separation with the wide receivers. What adjustments were made? Yeah, I mean, I think you guys are just getting in the groove of playing real football. You know, it's frustrating we don't start a little faster. But hopefully they got their feet under them now and got their mind right. We'll play better half. Thanks, Coach. End of the first half in Atlanta. Auburn leads Washington by a couple. We'll send you back to Kevin Mack and Jonathan. State Farm halftime report after this and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome back, everybody, to the 2018 Chick-fil-A kickoff game on ABC, presented by Walmart. It's a two-point game. Auburn leading Washington by a couple. And you just know that the Tigers believe they deserve a better fate based on the way they move pretty much up and down the field at ease, except in the red zone. Yeah, certainly red zone, and I think they got to run the ball better in the red zone, but give credit to Washington's defense. They stiffen when they needed to, but partner, we got to, the next 30 minutes of this football game are going to be talked about for the next three months in college football with the implications on both sides in the SEC and the Pac-12. I think we're in for a great finish. Benogany from the goal line oh, takes a hard hit smack down at the 17 yard line Jojo McIntosh will check the marker There is no foul for legal block in the back during the return. First down. That's the best news I've heard all day. There is no flag. Here's Todd McShay. Well, Gus Malzahn agrees with Brian Greasy. He was hot coming off of the field the first half, talking about how we've got to run the football inside the 10-yard line. It's been the biggest issue. He was asked another question about something else completely different, and he said, you know what, forget all of that. We've got to run the ball and score touchdowns. We're getting sick and tired of this. <laughs> And Gus and company, they're starting at their worst starting field position so far in this game. It's hard because you got Jared Stidham and a big arm and receivers out there, but Gus Malzahn is Gus Malzahn. He's going to want to run the football. Stidham the throw. Able to connect with Nate Craig Myers. Now that'll move the sticks quickly. We talked about four trips into the red zone, Steve, and you see two field goals, one missed, and a touchdown. It's not good enough to win, especially in this environment. Here's Cam trying the left side for a few. Washington has to feel pretty good about themselves coming out of that locker room. Certainly they haven't played their best football on the offensive side in the first quarter, but they got hot yes. in the second quarter, especially Jake Browning throwing the ball. And this defense has been up to the task. Second down and eight. Flag comes down. Full start. Offense number 64. Five yard penalty. Still second down. It's Mike Horton. He's a local kid. Junior from right here in Atlanta. That's not going to make Gus happy either. And Gus, by the way, has been downright chatty with us recently. <laughs> he has. You know, he, I, he seems more relaxed. Yes. Uh, although. Todd, Todd didn't seem to think he was very relaxed at halftime. <laughs> no, he was hot. His chili was running hot. Second and 13 after the penalty. Stidham with all sorts of time. Huskies rushing just three. And Stidham in all essence will throw that away. Benning. Potoahi was running him out of bounds. It's an interesting approach from Jimmy Lake. You know, he's spent a lot of time at the NFL level and loves that style of defense, trying to confuse quarterbacks, give them different looks. You're not just going to rush four and rush five. He rushed three, dropped eight. That's the third time he's done this in the game, and each time there's been nowhere for Jared Stidham to go with the football. 
And if you're getting pressure with three, third and 13. Three different players from all different angles, but Skinner was able to get rid of it. J DJ Beavers made the stop on Darius Slayton, but not enough. Fourth down. That was really well called from Jimmy Lake. He brought pressure on that third and long situation with the corner on their cat, forced a quick throw, and then made the tackle to force the punt. And it will be the first punt of the day. For Beavers, that's his eighth tackle. He has been the man. Here's Aiden Marshall to give it a boot. Washington got some good pressure. Ryan Bowman coming on the pressure on uh, the punter Aiden Marshall is able to get it away. Take a look now at our Pacific Life game summary. A lot of it is these quarterbacks getting hot. Jared Stidham started hot. Third down and eight, Craig Myers. And then this beautiful throw on the double move on the outside to South Canelo. Jake Browning had a slower start, but this second quarter he started firing. And Fuller has made a couple of nice plays on fades down in the red zone. And then an unbelievable catch by Quentin Pounds to make this a two-point game. For Aiden Marshall, that was just a 30-yard punt. And it's because of that that Washington will start with their best field position to begin. They're going to get pushed back now. Chris Peterson looking for an explanation. I think they got a holding yeah, call penalty. on Washington. And Greasy, even at the 27, that's their best starting field position. That's how it's gone. Two minutes into quarter number three. Browning the throw. There's heavy contact. Ty Jones brings it down. Jamel Dean tried to have the coverage. It looks like they're going to get this Jamel Dean, but it looked like Ty Jones pushed off yes, as much as Dean did. Pass interference. Defense number 12. The penalties decline. Result of the play is the first down. Dean had the interception in the first half, playing with a cast on his hand. But yeah, look at that push off there. I mean, you tell me how to play defensive back. That's offensive. I mean, <laughs> downright offensive. Five straight completions. It's going to count for Jake Browning. And this crowd is not agreeing. I think they have a point. Look at that right hand. Wow. One thing to play with it, another to intercept the pass with it. Swing pass out of the backfield to Ahmed. Daniel Thomas came up to make the tackle. Give him a yard. Auburn has been up to the task on defense with the run game and the perimeter quick game. Really, the only area that they have struggled against this Washington offense is the downfield throws. And if I'm Washington, I'm going to continue to attack Dean on the outside. And the other corner, Carlton Davis, graduated. He was their lockdown corner from a year ago. Brown in the throw. Aaron Fuller comes back and makes a terrific grab. It's a game of 24. Second time this has happened now to Fuller. Jordan Peters in position, but there's no defense for that. I mean, that's just perfectly thrown ball and a great adjustment by Fuller on the outside. Fuller's got 124 receiving yards in the game. How do you like that 20.7 yard average? Here's Gaskin stumbling forward for a few. Deshaun Davis bringing him down. Aaron Fuller had a real good fiesta bowl against Penn State. Six grabs, 61 yards and a score. He's doubled his yardage the same amount of catches. It's kind of your security blanket as a quarterback. That, that guy you trust, no matter where you throw the football, he's going to make you right. And we're going to see the Wildcat now, for the first time for Miles Gaskin. Gaskin gives it off to Ahmed. And it's first down yardage. Gaskin and Ahmed, a couple of buddies. Couple of roommates. Not the highest compliment you can say. Gaskin said, when I get married, I'm gonna have Ahmed in my wedding. That's a great relationship. I, I think Savon Ahmed is a rising star in college football. People in the Pac-12 know about this young man, 
uh, people around the country are going to be introduced to him. He's got as much talent as Miles Gaskin does. He's just younger. Washington's red zone defense has been the story. Let's see their red zone offense here. Third trip. Trailing by two. Keep it on the ground to Gaskin. Crashes down inside the 10 yard line. Darrell Williams, another stop for him. And Auburn defensively needs to take a page out of the Washington defense in the first half, stopping uh, the Auburn offense in the red zone. This is a, a big momentum opportunity for this Auburn defense. You're giving up some yards, just don't give up the touchdown. Gaskin still needs 19 yards for the school's all time rushing record. Won't have the chance here. Ahmed is in there. Browning looking to throw. Ty Jones couldn't wrestle that one away. Great job by Igbenogany. He's 5'11", 200 pounds, just converted from receiver to defensive back, Steve. This is his first game starting as a corner, and he's getting picked on by Jones and others. He's been in good position, just hasn't made the play on the football. That was well done. Browning had completed seven in a row prior to that. Here's third and six from the eight. It's Pacelli in motion, bottom of your screen. Browning looking that way, off a little pit play. It's Aaron Fuller for the touchdown, but there is a flag down. You can see that from a mile away. They're going to get Pacelli with the pick. Pass interference, offense number two. 15 yards from the previous spot. We think third down. He meant to say number five. Number two caught the ball fuller and scored. But you're going to see Bocelli just comes up and runs right into Dean. You can't, obviously, you can't do that. You got to make it look like a route. We see this time and time again, right, in college football. And a part of it is an acting job. You know, you just got to turn around. You can't block him. Just get in his way. That's right. enough. And it's a good call by the official. But the ref can. He got a good look. Two flags down. You got to make it like it's an accident. <laughs> Otherwise, you're stopped into Malone and you're picking and rolling there. That's a big mistake, though. Now you get third in a mile, and it's almost impossible to convert. Tell me about, again about this a neutral site game for Auburn. Listen. Browning's throw was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Marlon Davidson got a hand on it. And that's significant from Marlon Davidson because if they catch this football and get yards, it becomes an easier kick for Peyton Henry. Just gets his hand up there. And this has been a big question mark for Washington, the team, is how is their kicking game going to respond this year? It was atrocious a year ago. Peyton Henry's made one tonight. Let's see what he does here. This from 40 for the redshirt freshman from California. Yeah, the snap was a bit of an issue, and that's not even close. So the Huskies with nothing to show from it from that drive. Snap was a bit on the inside. And then the field goal hooked it to the right. Stays a two-point game. Welcome back to Dr. Pepper's championship drive game of the week where the score is Auburn 15 and Washington 13. Game of the week. Some people think it's the game of the season. And here we are, really, on the opening day of the college football season. Cam Martin, and the turf tackled him down. It's that leather helmet that got him. <laughs> this Washington defense is mixing things up, continuing to mix things up, different looks for Jared Stidham. What a rush three. Can the throw. Chandler Cox on the reception. He's just short of the marker. They're going to give it to him. They'll give him the spot. And the move sticks. Cox is in a slot. Stidham's got good protection and then unloads to Cox. And he has another first down for the Tigers. 
It's interesting. Gus Malzahn gets upset hot at halftime. He wants to run the football. He comes out. He's throwing the ball. First three plays on this drive are passes. I think he was pulling Todd's leg. Would he do that to Todd? Up the middle is Cam Martin into the secondary and lost a shoe on the play. Cam Martin did. The cousin of Jamal Charles, who went on to have a great NFL career. See, Martin's got to come out. He lost the shoe. Yeah. Use those Velcro laces. Wish my kids had that. Jartarvius Whitlow checks in. Stidham trying to set up the screen, and it's off the hands of Whitlow. Who they call Booty. You know, ever since Gus Malzahn stopped calling plays and gave it up to Chip Lindsey, he, he changes where he stands on the sideline. He actually goes 30 yards ahead of the offense. You'll see from this angle, he'll walk up ahead of the offense. And what he's trying to do, he's looking back through the defense. And he's keying specific defenders and how they're playing his offense and then communicating that to Chip Lindsey. So it's almost like an extra set of eyes on the field in the defense. Three tight ends on second down and ten. Receivers, I beg your pardon. And they'll keep it on the ground with Whitlow again. Second effort. A lot of east and west and a little north-south. Kyler Manu makes the stop. The reason I like what Gus is doing, he's taking a different role, right? He's, he's delegating the responsibility of calling plays. He's thinking about the, bi the bigger picture, the game plan. But then he also has found a niche and a way to contribute offensively that's that's different. And in this offense, it's it's valuable because they run the ball so much and take shots downfield. And I think he's the one that's looking, when do we want to take our shot downfield? Two for their last eight on third down conversions. Maybe Gus wants to get a little closer. Here's third and six. Stidham under pressure. Stidham able to get away from some people. Trying to get that first down, and Greg Gaines at all 316 pounds. That's full weight on top of the quarterback. Tremendous effort from Gaines. Oof, and a big hit from Miles Bryant. How about the guts by Stidham to take him on to try to get that first down? Well, he got every yard, and he got just enough to allow for a field goal attempt here from Carlson. It's going to be a big leg indeed. He was making them from 50 easy in one. Great. This is 54. He's three out of four so far. How about from 54? With a red shirt freshman on the way. And you see the officials shaking their head. No good. <laughs> We are in a defensive slugfest. 15-13. Slugfest. Just ask Jared Stidham. The Chick-fil-A kickoff game on ABC, presented by Walmart, is brought to you by Nissan. Innovation that excites. The head linesman, Mike Dolce, and the line judge, Patrick Holt, kind enough to wear ref cam for us tonight. The last look was the line to gain cam, which really rolls off your tongue, Breeze. <laughs> Can we come up with an abbreviation of the line to gain cam? I love that. Look at that little yeah. camera on the bill there. I mean, it's a great perspective, but you do get a little sick if you watch it too much. You know, it's jumbling around. Right. There's your line to gain cam. Right. People have seen that from the pylon of the end zone. This is on the line to game. We try to get that first down where you want to be in life. Miles Gaskin for a few. They can put cameras anywhere now. You gotta yeah. be careful. <laughs> there are cameras everywhere, buddy. Watch yourself. <laughs> See the Cincinnati Bengals play call coming in. And that's a fascinating system for Washington on offense as well. Browning's got the call. They're second down and five. From their own 42. Off the play fake. Browning is flushed. And he'll throw. Knocked away. And a penalty comes out. 
Nick Monogamy nearly had an interception there. I think they're going to get him for the left hand on the back of the receiver. That's interference. Defense number four. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. He did a great job breaking on the football. Just take a look at his left, his right hand there on the back of the shoulder, and that's going to get called every time. You know, I, I can't impress how hard it is what Igbenogany is doing. Moving from receiver to corner in the spring, and then he's the starting corner in this situation. And clearly, Washington's picking on him. Very really difficult to do. Zeros are on the play clock. I don't think they reset it the right time. And that's what some of the angst was about. And here's Miles Gaskin across the 30, maybe to the 35 as he stumbles forward. And that'll be the record. That's the run that people will remember. Miles Gaskin is now the all-time leading rusher for the Washington Huskies, surpassing the great Napoleon Kaufman. We'll celebrate some other time. Browning's busy hooking up with Ty Jones. And it's red zone time again. Red zone time where neither of these teams have been able to punch it in. We'll see if Washington approaches it a little bit differently, trying to run the football with Gaskin. First and goal. The fake to Gaskin. And the throw is tipped up in the air and will fall away harmlessly. There's a flag down. That was a run pass option there, and it looked like, to me, looked like there was a lineman downfield, but the ball was tipped. Ball clearly got tipped at the line of scrimmage. See if that impacts the call. So foul for eligible receivers downfield. Yeah. The ball was tipped behind the line of scrimmage. Second down. You see the, the right guard, Jackson Kirkland, goes downfield. He's right here. He gets past that three-yard barrier, and Browning was lucky the ball was tipped, which that negates the illegal receiver downfield. Daniel Thomas got a hand on it. I'm just glad they're calling that, you know, honestly. Second and goal. Browning on a center this time. It's Gaskin. Puts a shoulder down. Nick Monogany on the receiving end of that. There's a reason why Washington is not running in the middle of the field. They're running to the outside. Take a look at Derek, Big Derek Brown right here. I mean, that's you can't block him, so that's why they're running to the outside. Smart. Washington trying to get their little fast guys outside away from the big fellas inside. Where you got to get Jake Browning outside the pocket. Let him use his feet if nothing's there to get in the end zone. Here's third and goal. Browning option loses the football and it's picked up by Auburn. Darrell Williams is there. Huskies getting a little too cute and it burns him. I love the play call. I hate the execution. Right here, Nick Coe comes off the edge. You got to pitch that faster. You can't get too close to the defender. Browning holds onto it too long, and Coe just gets a mitt on it, creates a huge turnover for Auburn. And the red zone defense continues to be the story here. Two big time errors in this game. Jake Browning's played well and thrown the ball well, but he's had two turnovers on him. Costly decision-making. And on that play, it's painful twice for Browning. He's got to absorb that hit. See what Auburn can do with the football. Leading by two. Five to play here in the third. Cam Martin on the receiving end. will pick up three on the play. Boy, both teams, red zone defense has been outstanding in this game. We've had nine trips into the red zone, only one touchdown combined between these two teams, and it's a credit to these two defenses. One clap, and Stidham has the football. Hands off. 
is Martin. And running right into him was Tevis Bartlett. Yeah, Tevis Bartlett has moved from his Sam end of line of scrimmage position in the spring, moved back inside to Will. This Washington defense lost two really good linebackers in Azeem Victor and Keyshawn Vieira off of last year's team. They've tried to find the replacements on the inside between Ben Burkibben, DJ Beavers, and Tevis Bartlett. And I think this defense is heating up now, too. Third down and ten. See if movement on the offensive line. Is that Mike Horton again? Offside. Defense number 99. Jumped in the neutral zone, forcing the offense to react. Five yard penalty, still third down. Greg Gaines in the neutral zone. My apologies to Mike Horton and his entire family. <laughs> Trying to jump throw to Canella. It's incomplete. It's a good job there by Lake, the defensive coordinator, showing the double A gap blitz. Two guys coming up. C completely different look post snap in terms of the coverage in the back end, too. He's really kind of found his groove, I think, from the second quarter on as a defensive coordinator with the play calls, which, as you talked about, Brian, is brand new to him. Yeah, and, and Jalen Johnson is starting to heat up, too, on the inside. He got great pressure there in the face of Stidham. Going to try a different punter this time. Aaron Sipos will kick it away. After the first three and out of the game for Auburn. It's a hard-hitting affair. And a defensive struggle. Feeling this one on your couch. Direct TV, more for your college football thing. Number 10, Penn State, tied at 10 with App State. No more Saquon Barkley, but senior QB Trace McSorley gets his second rushing TD. Both teams have since added a touchdown. Nittany lines up 24-17 in the fourth. Steve, Brian, Todd, back to you. Cassidy, thank you. War Eagle in the house. Auburn with a two-point lead. While we were heading to commercial, there was a flag, Greece. What happened here? Yeah, it looks like there was a late hit, really late hit. Uh, after that punt, it's a dangerous hit there. You can see the whistle's already been blown, and that was a good call by the official. Adds another 15 yards onto this uh, drive for Washington. And now at the 42 with their best starting field position of the game. Trailing by two. Browning thrown off the back foot. That's Drew Sample, and there is a flag. It was a Houdini move there by Jake Browning. It was a free rusher right in his face. Williams came scot free. He just sidestepped and got the ball to his receiver. And a block in the back. It looked a block in the back. Offense number two. Ten yard penalty at the end of the run. Repeat, first down. So that's on Aaron Fuller, the receiver. Hey, just to clean up one note, when Browning threw the pitch and fumbled, that was Washington's first red zone turnover in nearly three years. September 19th, 2015. Nick Coe forcing the issue. Wow. A rarity indeed. Three and a half to play. It's been a thrilling defensive struggle. Still trying to catch your breath. First and five after the marker. Here's Browning. And I think it's coming back. Let's see. Looked like the Tigers jumped. Might have been Moultrie. Offside. Defense number 55. Five-yard penalty. That yardage results in a first down. That is T.D. Moultrie, the sophomore from Birmingham, and they'll move the change. 
If you're Jake Browning right now, you're, you're taking a breath. Okay, you, you've, you've had some good plays, you've had some bad plays. The fumble, obviously, but what a golden opportunity you have here in a two-point game with the ball on the plus 47-yard line. Settle everybody down and execute the offense. Hand off to Gaskin. And he's going to be dropped for a loss. Jamel Dean was the first man on the spot. Whenever you have secondary players making a hit on your running back in running plays two yards downfield, what does that tell you? You want to go over the top, okay? They're, they're too close to the line of scrimmage if, if a corner and a safety are making plays right around the line of scrimmage. So don't be shocked if they take a shot. Jamel Dean is a big quarterback, 6'2", 208. There's Browning underneath to Michelli. He's inside the 45, gain of four. Darrell Williams to stop. He brings up a big third down here in this third quarter. I think this, this game is going to be decided in two areas. Red zone, obviously, which has been the story so far, and third downs. And Jake Browning, with his experience, should be able to operate here. I'll give you a third area. How about kicking game? Yep. Somebody's going to have to make a big field goal here. Third and six. Here comes the pressure. Browning able to step up. And he'll throw and get the first down. Did not have to throw the ball. Smart quarterbacking by Jake Browning. What a big time play this is. He didn't panic. There's a free rusher on the outside. He doesn't panic. Gets him in the air. That's Big Cat Bryant. And then keeps the play alive. And his feet, his feet, people underestimate the amount of plays he makes running ball. Here's Browning. On the ground to Gaskin. He'll stop and start. And he'll take a pounding for that. Williams and then Atkinson. And there's a flag down. With a couple of plays. Interesting about Jake Browning. He's a lefty. He throws with his right hand. Does everything Personal else lefty. Foul. Face mask. Defense number 48. 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Darrell Williams is down. Yeah, Darrell Williams is down, and he's not moving. It's like Williams collided with his own teammate, Montavious Atkinson. Will step out. That's Darrell Williams being attended to on the sideline. Looks to be okay. The face mask penalty. Auburn's had 10 penalties in the game for 107 yards. And we haven't started the fourth quarter yet. Second personal foul gets them on this drive. And there's another flag, and that's Dontavious Russell. Offside with contact. Defense number 95. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Oh, this is getting a little out of hand for Auburn. There's too many flags down on the field. Started with the, the late hit, personal foul on the punt return. They've had personal foul face mask penalties. They've been offsides and undisciplined. Kevin Steele needs to get this group in order. Third straight trip into the red zone for Washington. Including this. First and five from the 15. Browning on the ground to Ahmed. He wants to live outside. And he's knocked out of bounds by Jamel Dean. And they'll give him the first down. Or if I'm uh, if I'm Washington, I'm going to get Ahmed on the field and Gaskin at the same yes. time. I love when they get in that wildcat formation with Gaskin, and then they use Ahmed as the perimeter run guy. It's been very effective. There is Ahmed. First and goal now. Slides forward for a yard. 
I know what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to yeah. run at Derek Brown. No. <laughs> going to pick something else? <laughs> Every time they run at big number five, it's a negative play. Keith Bonifant tried to explain the difference in the running backs, and he said of Ahmed, he's the hip hop. And of Miles Gaskin, he's the smooth jazz. I like that. And here's the music reference for the afternoon. Third quarter is complete. The winning quarter, the fourth quarter all the way in a two-point game. We'll be back after this in a word from our ABC stations. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, Todd McShay, welcome you back to Atlanta, the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Fourth quarter is about to get underway. And it's Chico McClatcher. Trying a jet sweep. Not even close to making something happen there, but Sean Davis comes up with a big stop. Reese Washington had 11 first downs for 146 yards in that third quarter. Zero points. Yep. And again, it comes back to that red zone uh, offense. You know, I think what's most effective for them has been throwing the ball up to Ty Jones, but Auburn has made the adjustment. They are now not allowing Jamel Dean to be man to man against Jones. They're putting a safety over the top. That tells you Washington has to run the football. Third down and goal from the 13. Fifth straight trip into the red zone for the Huskies. Here's Browning. Looking middle. Tipped away. But Shelley was open. But Darrell Williams prevented that pass from getting through. Darrell Williams got up, up, up off the mat. He was hurt, had a stinger, and saves a touchdown here. That was an easy touchdown for Bocelli. Great play by the linebacker. Here's Peyton Henry. Trying to give Washington their first lead of the game. From 30 yards away. Off the upright. We heard how terrific he's been in camp. He was living off those uprights when we were out in Seattle. It was almost like he was trying to hit the goalposts. He missed three of them, as you said, in practice. And Chris Peterson, I asked him about it after practice. He said, yeah, I'm concerned. But Peterson gave him a look as he came off the field like, any way you can get it, buddy. 14.06 <laughs> to play here in the fourth. And the Huskies have their first lead of the game, 16-15. Looking back with our four points by Sheridan Drive recap. That's the missed opportunities for Washington in the second half. And, uh, yeah, they keep kicking these field goals, but penalty on Bocelli certainly uh, cost them the missed field goal in the third quarter. The mistake, I mean... How many mistakes can you make and still go on the road, okay, in this environment on a big stage and come out with a victory on the back end? You just wonder how those mistakes will play into the end of this one. It's going to be Whitlow. And there's our first opportunity there you go. for Tell the new about the fair rule. catch rule. You know, those seminars really pay off, Greece, when you and McShea are on the islands in Massachusetts having a blast in Nantucket. <laughs> Josh Hoffman, our producer, and I are sweating it out of the rules seminar. Okay, tell us the Fair rule. Fair catch. Anything inside the 25, they'll bring it out to the 25 for you. As if it were a touchback. Trying to get the kickoff collision out of the game as much as possible. Okay, player safety. Player safety first. We're all about the player safety. I think it's a good rule. I think it's a good rule. There's more concussions on kickoffs yes. than any other play. It's almost two to one in football. That was Nantucket, you fancy people. <laughs> With Ryan Davis on the screen. Out beyond the 30. Time for our Aflac trivia question. Only two, sco two schools have produced at least one 1,000-yard rusher each season since 2009. Ooh, can you name them? I'll go with Auburn for sure. Yeah. I don't think well, Washington's had a bunch, yeah. right? From going back Chris Polk and Bishop Sankey. But I want to go with Boise. Did you see the card? I didn't see the Did you see the card? Oh. Yeah, there's the answer. Auburn. 
and Boise State. Thank you. There you go. Oh, you're going to take credit for that, too. Our Aflac trivia question. <laughs> I didn't see the car. Really? Those big letters? People in the crowd I saw the it. answer. I read it in the notes. Okay? Yeah. Uh, prepared. You're reading the notes, too. I'm sure. Third down and one. And 34. He's still got Chandler Cox in the game. No tailback on Jordan Short. That's Ryan Davis right in front of Stidham. Stidham's going to throw. And it is Davis. He's got the first down. He's out to the 40-yard line. That gives you a little bit of the window into Gus Malzahn and the respect that he has for this Washington defense in front on third and short. He goes play action and throw the ball quick to Davis on the outside. This game has really come down to two offensive-minded head coaches and coordinators trying to figure out how to move the ball and score against two really good defenses. Touchdowns are a short display here. Instead of the throw, went for the big shot. Off the hand of Nate Craig Myers, and a marker comes down. Well, JoJo McIntosh was in a difficult position there. This could be a targeting situation. Personal foul. Targeting. Defense number 14. That ruling is under further review. And I, I yeah. don't I don't agree with that that call. And I know it's kind of a and a it'll quick come call. It'll come back. Yeah. Because JoJo McIntosh comes with his head in the chest of Craig Myers. They're gonna let JoJo McIntosh stay in the game. He's, he's gonna be allowed to hang around a little longer. They uh, overturn that, that targeting call. It was a good reversal by replay. Yeah. I could see the officials on the field from their angles thinking he got hit in the head. They threw the flag. Replay did the right thing. Reverse the call. And that's one of those when in doubt, throw it. Protect put for, on player safety. Bill Amadier, our rules expert. 20 years an official in the Big Ten. 15 is the head cheese. The head referee. So second and 10 from the 40. Here's Stidham. Under some fire. And he'll just throw that one away. Miles Bryant coming. And that did not get back to the line of scrimmage. So that should be intentional, intentional grounding. grounding, of course, yeah. That ball clearly did not get past the line of scrimmage, and it's a good call. Stidham should have been aware of that blitz. Intentional grounding. Offense number eight. The ball never made it back to the line of scrimmage. Lost it down at the spot of the foul. Third down. He had a slow developing screen, Steve, and you can't run a slow developing screen into a blitz like that. As a quarterback, that's your job is to manage that situation, identify the blitz, either check out into another play, call timeout or something, but you can't do that. And so Auburn is going the wrong way, trailing by a point. Twelve and a half to play here in the fourth. We're going to have to take a few deep breaths when this game is over. This has been fast-paced and hard-hitting. Here's Stidham. Being chased out of the pocket. No intentional grounding there. Yeah, and if you're, and if you're an Auburn fan, this, this is not what you want to see. This is what you saw in the Peach Bowl against UCF. Nobody opened downfield. It's Jared Stidham running around. No distance. Fourth down. There was a flag down on the field. They got a sideline infraction. Okay. Well, Auburn needs to regroup on the sideline offensively. And I think they need to start running the football. Gus said he wanted to do it at halftime. They've come out and it's been a throw fest. You're right. I don't understand it. That's Aaron Sipos, the second punter used today so far by Auburn. We'll get it in the air. Aaron Fuller will call for the fair catch at the 31. 12 13 to go in the fourth. The Chick fil A kickoff game on ABC, presented by Walmart, is brought to you by Chick fil A Nuggets. Tonight is Nugget Night. Walmart. Discover more ways to shop at Walmart today. And Pacific Life. Experience the power of Pacific. 
We've seen two spectacular touchdowns, especially that one by Quinton Pounds. Sal Canellas was a dandy, too. Yeah, we had one. I mean, it was certainly Odell Beckham, and then yes. uh, a flip from Canella. And this two point conversion failed attempt could be the difference in the game right now. Yeah, it's a one point game. First down and 10 for Washington. On their own 31, trying to go back shoulder. There is a penalty down. Ty Jones brought it down. We'll check the marker. Last time I thought Ty Jones got away with a push off. Pass interference. Offense number 20. 15 yards from the previous spot. Repeat first down. And this time I thought it should have been a no call, so it's pretty much even. Nullifies a 22 yard reception. Bill Lamagna, you guys don't do makeup calls, right? Not at all. No. <laughs> we, we're you got, joking, Bill. You got to worry about what the grader's going to say, not what we're going to say. <laughs> got it. All right. So let that slide. I like to play call. I would continue to throw the ball down the field to Ty Jones and Fuller. Because Ig Benogany is making his first start at corner, and Jamel Dean has a cast on his hand. First and 25. Here's Browning getting some pressure being chased out of the pocket by Derek Brown. And again, you love the guts of Browning. He could just get out of bounds. He gets maybe a half a yard extra and takes the hit. Well, I love it. You send a message right in front of your bench, right? This is the fourth quarter. We're in a one-point game, and I'm going to do everything I possibly can to get my team to win. And he's got a decision to make over here. Put your shoulder down. Love it. Browning says, if I play well, we play well. Wants to go out on a high note. A program that he has forever changed. He owns practically all the passing records and he'll own plenty more by the end of this season. Here's Browning, the underneath to Bocelli. Bring up third down, Daniel Thomas bringing the wood. And that quote was in response to, you know, people asking him, what was the difference between 2016 and 2017 for you? And what he said is, I tried to do too much. I tried to, to do too much with my receivers. I tried to think too much. I tried to create too much. I just needed to focus on me, and that's where that came from. If I play well, we play well is what he distilled it down to. 43 touchdown passes in 16, just 19 touchdown passes a season ago. That would have been good for a lot of quarterbacks around the country. Not Jake Browning. Third and 12. Took a big hit, but stayed in there to make the grab was Aaron Fuller, and he's still short of the marker. Our big Cat Bryant came on a stunt, and he had full bore at Jake Browning. You want to talk about standing in there and taking a shot. Wow. Now, I don't know how that is not called. Right, targeting. That's a defenseless player by definition, and the crown of the helmet of Bryant comes through and hits him right in the jaw. Let's get the ones, let's call the ones that are obvious rather than the ones that are marginal. No flag on the play. Ryan Davis is back deep. Robert gets a running start and is taken down immediately. Austin Joyner with an excellent special teams tackle. There's a flag down now. Hey, Bill, go back. You agree with that? This is targeting by Bryant here? I see forcible contact to the head neck area. So whether he used the crown of the helmet yeah. or hit Either him with way. the shoulder. But I saw forcible contact that turned his head there. And that's a dangerous hit right there. That, that is what we're trying to get out of the game. The whole reason for these rules and player safety. Like, and, and, and two guys are looking right at it. And that's the head guy. That's the referee's job to protect the quarterback. Browning is face down on the turf, waving his arms, looking for the call. Stidham on the move. And he'll try to just shovel that out of bounds. Goes an incomplete pass. So losing a yardage on the play. 
Feels like the tempo with these two offenses has slowed down a yes. little bit. That first quarter was lightning fast. Now Auburn's kind of walking around a little bit. I think you see conditioning starting to come into effect here in the fourth quarter. This first game that these guys have played, right? Four quarters a long time. And you can't provide all of the camp in the spring and the fall. You can't come up with game-like situations. There's nothing like the real thing. It's Cam Martin, and he is stuck for a loss. Ben Burkiver and Tevis Bartlett there. And Gus Malzahn on this drive has come out. He wants to establish that run that we talked about. There's just nothing there. This, this Washington defensive front seven has been up to the task today. We wondered if they would be able to keep pace with Auburn offensively. All the eye candy that they do in the backfield. And Burke, Kevin, Bartlett, and the guys up front, Gaines, they have been up to the task. We have hardly mentioned Burke Kevin's name. Hard to recognize about the flowing rocks from a year ago. And with one second to snap it, Auburn has to spend a timeout. This was a really crisp first half, but we've seen a lot of sloppy play in the second half and a lack of discipline. A whole lot of penalty flags coming in a one-point game. Want to take a moment now to honor those who serve. Brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. Washington linebacker Benning Potoahi's credits. His success on the field and in the classroom to the military discipline instilled by his father on the left there. Are you going to mess with that Army Master Sergeant? No. Nope. I don't think so. Yes, sir, and no, sir. I mess with either one of them. Mm -hmm. Three tours of duty for Mr. Potoai. Here's Jarrett still in the throw with a man in his face. Underneath the wide open was Chandler Cox. Found a seam indeed. Great job by Stidham with patience and Chandler Cox, just a savvy football player. Only rushed two initially, so he releases out. Big first down. To gain a 12 on the players, first and 10. It's Stidham throwing. It's Ryan Davis on the short game, and there's a flag down. Why wouldn't there be? Personal foul, face mask, defense number 23. 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. As the penalties continue to pile up here, just announced the attendance, over 70,000 in the house for the Chick-fil-A kickoff game. Chris Peterson saying, who is that on? They called it on corner Jordan Miller. He was fighting to get off a block from Canella on the perimeter. I'm not sure if that was him or if it was a different player. Auburn's across midfield. Skid in the throw. Pulling it down is Darius Slayton. Right in front of Jordan Miller. That's a page out of Jake Browning's book right there with Aaron Fuller. And I like that. Going right back after a guy that got a penalty to see if the mental discipline is there. Good for 21. Stidham on a quarterback draw. And he'll lead forward. Shane Bowman made the tackle. Under eight to play now here in the fourth and a one-point game. The experts all expected this to be a tight, yeah. a tight game, one that we will be talking about regardless of how it ends for the next three months. You're getting to that point where it's all hands on deck. If you need Jared Stidham to run the ball in the red zone here, then that's what you need to do. Draw to Cam Martin for first down yardage. Well, this seven is, on the play. This is what Gus Malzahn was talking about at halftime. They get in this red zone, they want to run the football. Between the between the eight, the 80 other yards, it doesn't really matter, but here is exactly where he wanted to run the football is what he said. Auburn's first red zone trip since uh, midway through that second quarter or so. Todd, I don't know why Washington, knowing that, is still keeping both safeties deep. Rapp and McIntosh are still deep. They need to get up around the line of scrimmage, right? And they're two excellent run defenders, too. 
Looks like Jimmy Lake is going to substitute here and bring in a couple more defensive linemen, a couple fresh defensive linemen. He's been doing that all second half. I think it's been a big reason why this UW defense has been so successful. Third time out, Washington. There was an issue getting the right people on the field there. So each team has already used the timeout. They might desperately need back in the last seven minutes. That's a great point. There's a lot of plays in this game. The two-point conversion that was missed, the penalties, some of the mistakes. There's a lot of, of plays in this game that you're going to look back and point to to say that could have been the difference. So here's what I want to know from you, Brees. And you can't say it's a combination of the two, okay? <laughs> Is this great red zone defense we have seen in the game or poor red zone offense? I think these two defenses have played well. Uh, certainly there's a lot of yards that have been put up in this game, but I judge good defense by points allowed. That's really the only thing that matters to me, points allowed and turnovers, and these teams have kept the offenses out of the end zone. Well, we've seen a couple of missed field goals as well on each side. Tight down the stretch. Wouldn't have it any other way on opening day in college football. Second down and eight. Who's going to make a play here? Stidham puts it in the belly of Cam Martin. Maybe a yard. Porlahi, as we were just talking about him and his military family, he comes up with a stop. This is the area of field where I really like the usage of Chandler Cox. You know, that's typically where the ball goes in the run game. It follows number 27, and Jimmy Lake knows that. But Cox now comes out of the game because of the third down passing situation. So now you need one of these receivers to make a play. You can't be thinking field goal here. There's too much time, plus the field goals are a gimme here today anyway. Have to be thinking six. And on third and seven, on the ground. Up front, the left side, Prince Tega Wanogo, Markel Harrell, 77 and 76, get the push on Greg Gaines. Malzahn wanted to run the football, and he did. Two-point conversion. That's Jarrett Stidham at the bottom of your screen. Chandler Cox out of the Wildcat. Failed two-point conversion in the first half was critical. Cox is going to throw it, and it's going to be knocked away. Byron Murphy. Big time play from Byron Murphy. Recognizing in Wildcat. It's going to come downhill, but it'll still pass. Big finish coming up. This season, for every field goal, an extra point made by participating universities. Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Our thanks to Allstate. Interesting call there on that two-point conversion. You know, you got uh, one of the best quarterbacks in the country. You got a big slammer fullback in Chandler Cox, and you decide to try to have him throw the football. Be a few people are going to second-guess that one, you think? Yes, I think. It's a five-point game. 6.15 to go. Touchback, bring it out to the 25. Washington football, but here's Cassidy. Steve, time now for the All-State Mayhem moment. It's the 11th anniversary to the day since App State's win over Michigan. Number 10 Penn State looking to avoid the same mayhem. Jalen Moore, 16-yard TD run, puts App State up 38-31 with a minute to go. Penn State driving, guys. How many millions of dollars is App State getting this time around? Wait a second. We can't get through one game in the 2018 season without Cassidy rubbing it in on bringing up Michigan. It happens to be. This is the exact anniversary. That wasn't a force. She gets a pass on that. You had that one coming. <laughs> Handoff. Gaskin. Out past the 30-yard line. 
been a great game. It has. It has. It's had great defense, which I love. Uh, and now you've got these two senior quarterbacks with such so much on the line, so many national implications, college football playoff implications in this game, and you're coming under five minutes with two quarterbacks and a game on the line. Buckle up, people. Welcome to September and college football Saturdays. Browning with time, going to take a deep shot. Aaron Fuller can't catch up with it. Jordan Peters was running with him, and there is not a flag on the play. Great job by Jordan Peters. Fuller has abused this secondary all day on that fade route. A lot of them have been back shoulders, but great position and coverage from Jordan Peters on that play. Washington just three of 11 and third down conversions here today. See if they can pick this one up. Across the middle, plenty of running room for Andre Bocelli. He's dead at midfield. Right on the 15th, it's a gain of 19. Look at this patience from Jake Browning. He's got to wait to throw this in the second window. It's not open there because of the linebacker. He has to throw it over here. He's got great protection to do so. Now we get a flag. All start. Offense number 58. Five yard penalty, still first down. It's Caleb McGarry, the senior. Those are the plays in third, on third downs in the fourth quarter in tight ball games. That that's why you have the experienced quarterback. Those that's why they're so important. And Chris Peterson has been fortunate to have him for so long. He's hoping that he's got a little bit more magic in this game. We asked Peterson, hey, "What's life going to look like after Browning? We'll be fine. Don't worry. They got a lot of talent in that quarterback room. Jacob Eason, the transfer, he'll be available next season." Not available, not allowed to be in the building here today. Unless it's on his own dime. It's Miles Gaskin. The ball carrier. Well, they are, they are well set up for the future at quarterback. Yep. I'm Chris Peterson. I, I think we'll think hard about getting Savon Ahmed back in the game. He's such a great change of pace. And I know that Miles Gaskin is your number one guy. But Ahmed brings a little bit more juice, and he's in the game of tailback. And there he is. A good look at what he's looking at right now. Hotton and Sample spread out. This is a road game for Washington, bro. This is not a neutral side game. Ahmed is stopped. Montavious Atkinson came up to make the tackle. up another third down now third down and long here you got to start thinking about maybe if this is four down territory Bradley looking to escape and he has the first down yardage Jake Browning doing whatever it takes. Big time. We talked about it on the last drive with Auburn offensively. Whatever these quarterbacks need to do, Stidham running in the red zone, and now Jake Browning making another play with his feet on third down. He had to have it, and he got it. Two quarterbacks who have established a bit of a relationship from the Manning passing camps. A duel to the finish here today in Atlanta. From the 38. Browning throws, and it's too high for Aaron Fuller. Second and 10. Wow, that was a great opportunity there for Washington. Browning knew he was protected. Great blitz pickup. Hilbers in the place of Trey Adams picks it up, and Fuller catches that football. Washington might have been in business. Hilbers has done well in, in relief of, of Trey Adams. The, Preseason All-American. It's been surprising. We haven't had, had to call his name once today. That means he's doing a good job. Yep.
Gaskin stops and starts. And he'll take the loss. Derek Brown. In the big time for Auburn on defense. Who else but Derek Brown? I think Kevin Steele got this defensive line together on the sideline after that last drive. And he said, listen, you are the strength of our team. You have to carry us here in the fourth quarter. It's up to you. Play like you can play. And they're coming out in a concerted effort this drive. And the clock really starting to become a factor now inside two and a half. Five receivers for Jake Browning. Didn't like the first look. Now he's in all sorts of trouble. And he'll go down. Big Cat Bryant. Number one in your program. Maybe number one in your heart, depending upon who you're rooting for. Fourth down. And the only way Jake Browning goes down after that long extending the play is if you have great coverage downfield. So give that secondary credit here. And now a decision for Chris Peterson, fourth and 15. I think you've got to go for and it. you got to go for it, yeah. I mean, remember, they had to burn a timeout when they were on defense because of a personnel issue as well. So, yeah. It's all out blitz. Fourth and 16, here they come. Tavius Russell running down the field. You can't hear anything. The Auburn sideline has exploded in joy. Kevin Steele on the biggest play of the game brought his biggest blitz of the game. He brought everybody to put pressure on Jake Browning. Here they are in here. There's nobody back in the middle of the field. The field Jake Browning had to get rid of this football, but he didn't have the time. By the defense. That ruling is under further review. They're calling that a fumble on the field. Clearly recovered by the defense. We'll see if it's an incomplete pass. It looked, it looked like that uh, his arm was coming forward throwing that football, Bill. It was. The arm came forward. The ball was out from the pass. It hit the ground. It would be an ground because there was no eligible receiver in the area. And now they call it the intentional grounding right. if replay reverses it. We talked about that earlier. It was always yep. a possibility. Yep. So if replay reverses this, we'll have a spot foul for intentional grounding because he said nobody was in the area. Wow, a lot going on in this play. They had to have it. The all-out pressure. Now, Miles Gaskin, number nine, is right there in the area. Just gets up. You might see that on, on the replay as well, huh, Bill? That's a possibility. It's still the referee's call, though, about in the area. Replay will not involve itself over number nine. But uh, number nine, if they saw him, should take would take him off the hook for a grounding at the official side. So here's Miles Gaskin right right there number nine. So he's in that area. I think I think that's enough in my book. Plus the defender tipping the ball prevented it from getting to number correct, nine. Correct. And the reason this is big is because obviously the change of field position obviously they're not going to get the conversion on fourth down but they still have two timeouts yes. left and they can force a punt. You never know what's going to happen. A minute 21 left. It's a critical call. They're going to put time back on the clock over this too, because of the guy right. running, the player running with the ball. Yeah. So there will be some time put back on the clock when they reverse this to a pass. Dontavious Russell, the big fellow, was, was thinking six <laughs> <laughs> to the hizzy. Another stop from this Auburn defense, right? When they needed it the most, that defensive line showed up. Looked like there was one minute and 30 seconds when that ball was thrown. So maybe they'll tack on nine more seconds to what's on the game clock now. After further review, the, group, the ruling on the field is the ball was passed and not fumbled. As a result, the ball will be placed at the 47-yard line. It'll be Auburn's ball, first and 10. Please adjust the game clock 
to 1 minute 31 seconds. Great job getting that right. There's a lot going on there. Line of scrimmage was the Auburn 43. So the last three defensive plays by that Auburn defense, <laughs> there's Dontavious. He's still thinking about what might have been. Last three defensive plays by Auburn. Loss of three, loss of three, and that incomplete pass. You know, I think these two teams have battled today, Steve, and these two coaches had their teams ready to play. And we talked about all the national implications yes. and college football playoff implications. It looks like they're going with the grounding by where they're putting the sticks. And I think at the end of the day, one of these teams is going to lose, right? But I don't think it knocks them out of the playoff right. conversation because of how evenly matched this game has been. That's a great point. What you couldn't do, either school is get blown out here right. today. Right. We're not saying this is going to end up in a Washington loss, but the committee will reward Washington for going on the road and playing relatively even with Auburn. 91 seconds left on the ground. You know, last, the, last two, out. the last two years, Steve, we've had examples of this, right? We've had examples with Ohio State and Oklahoma. Back for third and two. That's Jarrett Stidham. The top of your screen there, out of the Wildcat, it's Whitlow. He's got the first down yardage. JoJo McIntosh can knock him in it tomorrow, and it's not going to make a difference. Here's Cassidy. Thanks, Steve. Back to Happy Valley. After Trace McSorley tied things up at 38, Chandler Stanton going for a 56-yard game-winning field goal. No good. That game is heading to overtime. And coming up at 8 Eastern on ABC, Nick Saban and number one Alabama in Orlando taking on Louisville. 8 Eastern again here on ABC. Back to you. Cassidy, thank you. What a hard-fought game this was. Yes. And uh, two quarterbacks that braved it out, gutted it out. Jake Browning was under duress most of the game. It's unbelievable throws. But really, it came down to the two defenses. And Auburn just had a little bit more in the tank. Especially in the red zone opportunities that will lament both schools. They look at film this week. Final 30 seconds of this one. And the Pac-12 will say, hey, don't forget about us. We came. Represent themselves well. Yes, right? represent themselves well. Yeah. And if, and if Washington, which it looks like they have the squad, you know, to compete in the Pac-12, they're going to have to run the table, in my opinion. That is, there is no more margin for error. That's the thing to, to learn about Washington in this whole right. game. Uh, Auburn, on the flip side, has earned us a little bit of insurance for that really difficult schedule with Alabama and Georgia. Down to Todd McShay. Coach, you said at halftime that you had to run the football inside the 10-yard line. It's exactly what you did. It got you play call there at the end to score the touchdown. What was the difference? Yeah, Chip made a great call there. They were bailing out, dropping eight. And he ran zone. We scored a touchdown. They're one of the best teams in the country. And I know we were a little sloppy, but we won the game. Real proud of our team, the way they responded. And uh, last year, you know, first year, I don't know if we'd have done that. But we got it done today. How about the play of your defense to hold them to yeah. 16 points in this game? Our defense is one of the best defense in college football. They faced a lot of adversity, got us turnovers. That big fourth down stop was huge. Thanks, Coach. Congratulations. So a tight one as expected. Auburn the win over Washington by five. We're not going to see you next week, Reese. Good luck on Monday Night Football. Well, thanks, Dad, no. thanks. See you in a few weeks. Again, Auburn in a game that will resonate around the country. Able to hang on and beat Washington. Tonight, tune in to 8 Eastern on ABC as Louisville takes on top-ranked Alabama. Brian Greasy, Tom Shea, and our crew. I'm Steve Levy. Happy college football season, everybody.